Our final speaker tonight has been a governor. She's been an ambassador. She has taken on world dictators. She has taken on the liberal media, and she does it with style, wearing heels to kick a little butt. So our final speaker tonight, Ambassador Nikki Haley. crowd it's great to be back here in Iowa I will tell you I left South Carolina and it was hot and everybody's saying oh you're coming to the Iowa State Fair you know it's gonna be hot and I'm always like you know I'm from South Carolina right <laughs> but we don't sweat there we glisten so I'm not gonna go into too much about me I think you guys know I was born and raised in rural South Carolina went to a public university, Clemson University, go Tigers. Graduated with a degree in accounting. I'm not a lawyer, I'm an accountant. And um, went on and served two terms as governor of South Carolina, took a double digit unemployment state, turned it into an economic powerhouse. And then I went to the United Nations and I took the kick me sign off of our backs and we were respected again at the UN. And you know, one of the things that happened at the UN, when we moved the embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, the world condemned us. And I was proud to issue the US veto. But I was so angry, I went back to my staff and I said, I want you to put a book together. I want you to list all 193 countries. I want the second column to be how many times they voted with the US and against the US. And I want the third column to be how much foreign aid we give them. I took that book and I gave it to President Trump. He lost his mind. He's flipping pages, he's yelling out countries. And I said, look, I'm not saying you give foreign aid based on a percentage vote at the UN, but that should be one of the things we look at. Quit trying to buy friends, quit paying off enemies. You know, you, America gave $50 billion in foreign aid last year. Do you know who they gave it to? Pakistan, that harbored terrorists that tried to kill our soldiers. Iraq, that has Iranian influence. Belarus, who's holding hands with Russia as they invade Ukraine. Communist Cuba, who we named a state sponsor of terrorism and who's putting up a spy center off our coast. And the one that makes me sick to my stomach, we gave money to China. How weak do we look? When I am president, we will no longer give money to countries that hate America. That's a promise. You know, Iowa is an important state. Not because of the caucuses, that's an important thing, but for our national security. Food security is national security. Energy independence is national security. You supply us with our food, you supply us with ethanol. But now I wanna to talk to you, we've got lots of issues from debt to crime to a lawless border, lack of transparency in education, we've got that. You know all the answers with that, we can go through that. But what I wanna to talk to you today about is national security. Because right now, if you look at what we're facing. We've got national threats from all around. You can look at it. You've got Iran building a bomb. You've got North Korea testing ballistic missiles. You've got China on the march, right? You've got Russia invading Ukraine. But make no mistake, none of that would have happened had we not had that debacle in Afghanistan. My husband is a combat veteran. He deployed to Afghanistan. The idea that he and his military brothers and sisters had to watch the U.S. leave Bagram Air Force Base in the middle of the night without telling our allies who stood shoulder to shoulder with us for decades because we asked them to be there. Think about what that told our friends. More importantly, think about what that told our enemies. 
But now I want you to think about the biggest national security threat that we face. And that's China. And not enough people are talking about it. China has been planning war with the United States for years. That's not over-dramatizing. This is the biggest threat we've had since Pearl Harbor. Don't take my word for it. Let's look at what they've done. Look at the infiltration they have done in America. They have bought 400,000 acres of U.S. soil, most recently near Grand Forks Air Force Base, where our most sensitive drone technology is. They are giving millions of dollars to our universities so that they can steal research and spread Chinese propaganda. They have sent enough fentanyl last year that would kill every single American. 75,000 Americans last year. We've had more people die of fentanyl than the Iraq, Afghanistan, and Vietnam wars combined. Don't think for a second China doesn't know what they're doing. Then you look at the fact that they have their Chinese front companies lobbying our members of Congress on behalf of the Communist Chinese Party. We now know that they have malware embedded in our systems, our network systems, our infrastructure systems, our communication systems, our power grid. And we're trying to find out where the code is. But if they have that code, that means they could disable us, especially when it's near our military installations or when it's just the general public. Then you go and you look at the fact they steal $600 billion worth of intellectual property from us every year. We open a new Chinese investigation on spying every 12 hours in this country. Every 12 hours. And then you look at what they're doing with their military. They've built up their military. They have the largest naval fleet in the world. They have 350 ships. They'll have 400 ships in two years. We won't even have 350 ships in two decades. Their military is 2 million strong. Ours is 1.4, and our recruitment is 25% down. They are building up hypersonic missiles. We've barely gotten started. They're doing artificial intelligence. They're doing cyber. They're doing space. They are now the biggest developer of neurostrike weapons. Neurostrike weapons disrupt brain activity so that they can use it against military commanders or they can use it against groups of the population. Think about all of those things. And what are we doing? Totally distracted. We're talking about a bunch of other things that don't even matter. Because you know what? All of these issues are big issues. But if we don't have national security, none of it matters. What should we be doing? We need to take China head on. The way you do that is you say China will no longer buy any American soil whatsoever. And we don't stop there. We take back the U.S. soil they have already purchased. That's a problem for our farmers, and you know they bought the number one pork producer in the country that's right here in Iowa, right? That's food insecurity. Then we'll go to our universities. We say, you either take Chinese money or you take American money, but the days of taking both are over. We will get that Chinese infiltration out of our universities. We won't just stop the Chinese Communist Party. We will stop all foreign lobbying, period, against, to any of our members of Congress. We will get that out. And we will make sure that China knows we will stop all normal trade relations with China if they don't stop killing Americans. There's a list of cyber technologies that we don't want China to have because it builds up their military and it threatens America. The Biden administration approved 70% of those requests last year. We will turn that list into a blacklist and we will stop sending any technologies to China that could hurt America. And we will build up our military. A strong military doesn't start wars. A strong military prevents wars. We will make sure they're strong. We'll pull down the bureaucracy. We'll pull down the red tape. We'll stop favoritism with defense projects. And we will make sure our military are strong and ready and protected.
You know, several weeks back, I dropped my husband off for another year-long deployment. I dropped them off at 4 a.m., and I watched him and 230 soldiers pick up their two duffel bags of belongings to load a bus to go to a country they'd never been, all in the name of defending and protecting America. They're willing to sacrifice their lives and their families because they still believe in this amazing experiment that is America. So if they're willing to fight for us there, shouldn't we be willing to fight for America here? We have a country to save. And in order to save our country, that means we have got to stop all the distractions. We've got to leave the negativity behind. We've got to start looking at these new problems with big solutions. And we need to understand that we have to focus on everything from debt to crime to a lawless border to our national security. But if we do this, if we go back to our national purpose, we can get back to a place of strength. Because right now, you look at our biggest enemy and what's happening. You're inviting them to the dinner table. You're inviting them into our home. You're inviting them to compete with us. That's not what you do with an enemy. You stomp an enemy out. We can do that. But we have to stop all this craziness like gender pronouns in the military. Someone asked me why I was running, and I said, my parents came here 50 years ago to an America that was strong and proud and full of opportunities. I want them to know that country again. I'm doing this for my husband, Michael, and his military brothers and sisters. They need to know their sacrifice means something, that we do love our country. I'm doing this for my daughter, because she just got married and I saw how hard it was for her and her husband to buy a home. And I'm doing this for my son because I have watched how he has been nervous to write papers of things he doesn't believe in because that's the only way he's going to get an A. That's wrong. That's not us. That's not America. For the first time in our country, 78% of Americans don't think their kids are going to live as good of a life as we did. We can't be okay with that. I'm not okay with that. But what I will tell you is if you will join me, not only will we take back our national security and be strong again, we will get our economy back in shape and understand the value of a dollar. We'll value every person and know that government works for the people and not the other way around. And we will make sure that America is strong and proud and back on track. Join us at NikkiHaley.com. God bless you all. Thank you so much. All right, well, are we fired up or what to fire Joe Biden in 2024?